Hi, this is Elon Musk 24 Hours. NASA's Space Launch System and SpaceX's Starship stand before us as the two most powerful rockets ever built. When NASA announced SpaceX's Starship as one of their chosen lunar landers for Artemis missions, alongside Blue Origin and Dynetics, it marked a pivotal moment in spaceflight history. These two colossal rockets tell a tale of contrasting worlds. The SLS emerges from a decade of development by NASA's traditional aerospace teams, carrying forward the Space Shuttle's legacy. Meanwhile, Starship takes shape in the fields of Texas, where Elon's team of former water tower builders turned rocket engineers rapidly prototype the future. The irony runs deep. As SLS repurposes shuttle hardware, Starship pushes the limits of what's possible in rocket design. Two vastly different engineering philosophies, two paths toward the same stars, emerging at exactly the same moment in history. I've spent months analyzing both programs, uncovering surprising realities that challenge common assumptions about these rockets. Today, we're breaking down their complete stories, the history, progress, and true capabilities that will define the next chapter of human spaceflight. Let's dive right in. When we talk about SLS and Starship, we're not just comparing two rockets. We're witnessing a pivotal moment that will define humanity's future in space. Back in 2011, as the space shuttle made its final descent through Florida's morning sky, few could have predicted what would unfold over the next decade. NASA faced a daunting challenge. How do you follow up the most complex flying machine ever built? The answer would emerge through two radically different paths, each shaped by the dreams, struggles, and determination of thousands of engineers and technicians. The story of SLS begins in the wake of tragedy. After losing Columbia and her crew in 2003, NASA knew the shuttle era had to end. But ending America's human spaceflight program wasn't an option. The engineers who had devoted their careers to the shuttle program carried not just technical expertise, but a solemn responsibility to build something even safer, even more capable. Many had worked alongside the heroes we lost. They understood the stakes. Congress gave NASA a seemingly impossible mandate. Build America's most powerful rocket ever, do it with existing technology, and have it flying by 2016. The team approached this challenge methodically, analyzing five different designs. Each option represented a different vision of our future in space. The winning design would become SLS, but it wasn't just a bigger shuttle. Take the core stage. While it shares the familiar orange color of the shuttle's external tank, its construction tells a different story. Engineers chose a new aluminum alloy, AL2219, developed entirely new welding techniques, and even created a different type of insulating foam. Every component represents lessons learned from 30 years of spaceflight, some paid for with human lives. The RS-25 engines powering SLS embody this evolution. These aren't just recycled shuttle engines, They've been pushed beyond their original limits, modified to deliver 111% of their rated thrust in emergencies. Each modification, each improvement, carries the weight of history. These engines lifted heroes like Sally Ride and John Young to orbit. Now they'll help carry the next generation to the moon. But while NASA was meticulously crafting SLS, something extraordinary was happening in South Texas. SpaceX's vision for Starship didn't emerge from government committees or congressional mandates. It started with a simple question that had haunted Elon Musk for years. Why aren't humans on Mars yet? The early days of Starship development read like a tech startup story, not an aerospace program. Tom Muller, SpaceX's first employee, had built a prototype Big Falcon rocket engine in his rocket club before joining the company. That experimental spirit would define Starship's evolution. When Musk unveiled the concept in 2016, many aerospace veterans scoffed. A 122-meter-tall rocket with 42 next-generation engines? Fully reusable? It seemed like science fiction. But SpaceX wasn't building on paper. They were building in fields with teams working around the clock, learning through failure. The contrast with SLS couldn't be starker. While NASA carefully planned each step years in advance, SpaceX was literally building a factory around their rocket. They weren't just developing new technology, they were developing a new way to develop technology. The results have been both spectacular 
and spectacularly explosive. We've watched Starhopper dance above Texas, its single Raptor engine proving the basic concept. We've seen test tanks burst under pressure, each failure teaching valuable lessons. The loss of SN1, SN3, and SN4 would have been program-ending disasters under traditional aerospace development. For SpaceX, they were data points, stepping stones toward success. This rapid iteration has produced remarkable progress. The Raptor engine, the heart of Starship, represents a revolution in rocket propulsion. It's the first full-flow stage combustion engine to fly, operating at pressures that would have seemed impossible a decade ago. SpaceX has built over 26 Raptor engines, most within just the past year, each one pushing the boundaries of what's possible. When NASA announced Starship as one of their chosen lunar landers, it marked a profound shift in space exploration. The same agency that had carefully developed SLS for a decade was now embracing SpaceX's radical approach. This wasn't just a contract award, it was validation of a new way of thinking about spaceflight. The numbers tell an astounding story. SLS Block 1 will cost around $875 million per launch capable of sending 27.5 tons toward the moon. The upgraded Block 1B pushes that to 43 tons. Starship, with orbital refueling, could theoretically deliver 156 tons to lunar trajectory at a fraction of the cost. SpaceX aims for launch costs under $10 million, though early flights will likely be more expensive. But raw numbers don't capture the human element of this story. At NASA's Michoud Assembly Facility, Technicians who once built shuttle external tanks now craft SLS core stages, their decades of experience ensuring every weld meets the exacting standards spaceflight demands. In Boca Chica, young engineers work alongside seasoned veterans, some who built water towers now helping construct the largest rocket ever attempted. The parallel development of these rockets represents more than competing engineering philosophies. It's a testament to human ingenuity and determination. We're watching two different dreams take shape. NASA's vision of sustainable, methodical expansion into deep space and SpaceX's bold push to make humanity multiplanetary. Both approaches carry their own wisdom. NASA's careful development of SLS ensures that when humans once again venture beyond low Earth orbit, they'll do so on a rocket built on half a century of spaceflight experience. Every bolt, every weld, Every component represents the culmination of lessons learned, some at terrible cost. SpaceX's rapid development of Starship shows us that sometimes the best way to solve impossible problems is to question basic assumptions. Their willingness to fail fast and learn faster has already revolutionized spaceflight. The sight of Falcon 9 boosters landing simultaneously at Cape Canaveral once seemed like fantasy. Now it's routine. As we stand on the cusp of a new era in space exploration, these two rockets remind us that progress doesn't follow a single path. The methodical expertise that drives SLS and the radical innovation behind Starship both have crucial roles to play in humanity's journey to the stars. Together, they represent not just different ways of building rockets, but different facets of human achievement. Our capacity for careful, sustained effort and our ability to imagine and create the seemingly impossible. As we enter this new era of space exploration, the existence of both SLS and Starship isn't a contradiction. It's a testament to human ingenuity. NASA's methodical approach with SLS has created a reliable path to deep space, while SpaceX's rapid innovation with Starship opens doors we once thought impossible. Together, they represent different solutions to humanity's greatest challenge, becoming a spacefaring civilization. What started as seemingly opposing philosophies has evolved into complementary approaches. NASA's selection of Starship as a lunar lander proves that these two paths can converge. It's not about SLS versus Starship anymore. It's about combining the best of both worlds to push human exploration further than ever before. I'm also excited to announce that we'll be closely following Starship's upcoming orbital test flight and SLS's Artemis missions. Make sure you're subscribed to Elon Musk 24 hours for the latest updates on these historic developments. Drop a comment below with your thoughts on which approach you think will shape the future of spaceflight. And if you found this analysis valuable, sharing it helps grow our community of space enthusiasts.
Together, we're witnessing the dawn of a new space age, where both traditional aerospace and commercial innovation drive us forward. This is Elon Musk 24 Hours, keeping you connected to humanity's journey to the stars. In the world of rocket science, sometimes the smallest components face the biggest challenges. During SpaceX's latest Starship flight, a crucial detail caught the attention of aerospace enthusiasts worldwide. The grid fins, those distinctive waffle-like structures that guide the massive, super-heavy booster back to Earth, showed signs of stress that could impact future launches. While Flight 7 marked a triumphant achievement with the successful catch of the super-heavy booster, Sharp-eyed observers noticed something concerning around T plus 255. The grid fins appeared to warp under intense heat during the hot staging maneuver. It's a challenge that echoes similar issues from Flight 5. And while it didn't prevent a successful landing this time, it raises important questions about the path to SpaceX's ambitious goal of full Starship reusability by 2025. What makes this particularly fascinating is how it highlights the extreme engineering challenges of spaceflight. These grid fins must perform flawlessly across an incredible range of conditions, from hypersonic speeds through the thin upper atmosphere to precise maneuvering during the final descent. As Elon Musk himself explained, grid fins work quite well across a wide regime from both very high velocity hypersonics through supersonic, transonic, and subsonic. It's hard to have aero surfaces that work well across that entire regime. Today, we'll explore exactly what happened during this critical phase of Flight 7, examine the potential solutions SpaceX is developing, and understand why these seemingly simple structures are so crucial to the future of reusable spaceflight. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours, your daily source for the latest SpaceX developments. Let's dive right in. The story of Starship's grid fins is more than just a tale of metal and engineering. It's a testament to human ingenuity pushed to its absolute limits. As Flight 7 soared through the atmosphere that January morning, few could have predicted the drama that would unfold at T plus 255. The moment when those massive steel structures began to warp under intense heat wasn't just a technical glitch. It was a powerful reminder of the extreme challenges we face in our quest to become a spacefaring civilization. Picture this. In the control room, engineers watched with bated breath as their monitors displayed real-time data from the grid fins. These weren't just any control surfaces. They were the culmination of countless hours of innovation, failed attempts, and breakthroughs. Each fin, weighing as much as a small car at three metric tons, represented a bold departure from conventional aerospace wisdom. The decision to use steel instead of titanium had raised eyebrows across the industry, but SpaceX has never been a company to follow the beaten path. The story takes us back to the early days of Falcon 9, when SpaceX's engineers faced their first grid, fin challenges. Those initial aluminum fins, while innovative, required extensive refurbishment after each flight. The heat shields needed constant replacement and the dream of rapid reusability seemed distant. Then came what many considered a quantum leap, the switch to titanium. These masterpieces of engineering, each one cast as a single piece, marked the largest titanium castings ever created. They worked beautifully on Falcon 9, handling re-entry heat without breaking a sweat. It seemed like the perfect solution, but Elon Musk had a different vision for Starship. In a decision that sent shockwaves through the aerospace community, he chose to go with welded steel grid fins. The rationale? It wasn't just about cost, though steel's price tag at 15 to 20 times cheaper than titanium was certainly appealing. It was about something far more profound, democratizing access to space itself. The engineering team faced a monumental challenge. They had to design grid fins that could withstand temperatures hot enough to melt many metals while maintaining precise control of a rocket larger than the Statue of Liberty. The 301 series stainless steel they selected offered an intriguing trade-off. While its melting point was 15% lower than titanium, it could remain mechanically functional at nearly triple the working temperature. A scorching 840 degrees Celsius 
compared to titanium's 330 degrees Celsius. Then came the hot staging innovation, a daring maneuver where Starship's engines ignite while still attached to Super Heavy. It was like asking someone to stand in a tornado of fire and maintain perfect balance. The grid fins, already pushing the boundaries of their design, now had to endure this additional trial by fire. Flight 7's footage revealed the cost of this ambition as the fins visibly warped under the intense heat. But here's where the story takes an unexpected turn. Despite the visible distortion, the grid fins continued to function, guiding the massive booster back to Earth with remarkable precision. This resilience wasn't just luck. It was the result of countless simulations, tests, and refinements.